Okay, it's the start of the stitch along. Are y'all ready? Um, I hope you have your pattern. Um, we're stitching Blessings Abound, and we'll be stitching this one right here. I got myself a handy dandy overhead light. I'm hoping that this is, um, I'm sorry, not a light, a uh, camera holder, so I'm hoping this works. Um, so we'll be stitching this one. Um, this is just kind of like a little test experiment to see if it's going to work. I have some linen. I have a hoop because I liked hoop stitching. There's a lot of other people that do not like hoop stitching, so you're gonna have to try and decide what's right for you. But I use a hoop, I use a Morgan hoop, and I'll put a link in the blog post so that you can see that. Um, I am a big, huge fan of Sullivan's ball tip needles, so I'll be using those. You'll probably want a scissor. Um, I am stitching on linen. Some of you will be stitching on eight cloth. And you can see here that Ada cloth is different in linen, not just in color, but um, you can see the holes more readily in Ada, and you can't as much in linen. And we'll talk about more of that in, about that more in a minute. Um, here are the colors that we're using for stitching. Uh, just a beautiful fall selection of colors, and um, I'm super excited to get started. One thing that I recommend to you is that you um, take your pattern to a printer if you have one, and I make a working copy, and so that's my working copy that I'll be stitching off of. Um, they ask that we not really show the pattern because they're afraid that people might take a picture of the, of the pattern with their camera, and then they'll have um, people trying to steal the pattern. So we won't be doing that, but... Um, I'll be trying to show you a couple things here and there from the pattern without showing you the whole pattern. So here we go. Um, inside the front cover, there is what they call a key, and a key lets you know what you'll be stitching where. For example, I'm just gonna show a little sneak peek of the pattern over here. You can see that there's some symbols in the boxes there. Those are hearts, and so we want to be able to know what color to stitch in the boxes. So. We're gonna see the heart symbol. We're gonna see that we're supposed to use weeks and the color moss. And so what you do is you go into your colors. A lot of people put these on a ring. I typically put mine in floss away bags, but I haven't had time to do that, but I will. So here's the color moss. Moss is gonna be awesome for the leaves. Um, I'm stitching with the over dyed cottons, which means they're often variegated. They're not always variegated to the same level. Like this one's variegated a lot. You can see that this one um, right here, the sweet potato color we'll be using, there's not much variegation you can see there. It's basically um, a, a very uh, light variation from a darker orange to a medium orange. But here, the variegation is a lot. And I like using over dyed threads because I do like the variegation. Um, Weeks thread is not cut, so you have to take it apart like this, and you actually have to get a piece off, and you have to cut it. And so I got my handy dandy scissors here, so I'm just trimming a spot. Um, some people suggest 18 inches, I'm not super picky. Um, I'm just go with the flow. And so I'm going to put this over there for a floss away bag in a short bit. And then I'm going to divide the threads like this and I'm going to pull one thread because for me, I'm stitching on 40 count. If you're stitching on a different count besides that, you likely want two threads. Um, some people use one thread on 36 count linen, but pretty much any other they use two strands of floss. And I just like one strand of floss. And I'm gonna really encourage you to find out what you like, practice and see what you like. Um, everybody's a little bit different. Um, whoops, I know one thing right now, I'm gonna need to switch my glasses. Um, I bought glasses from Zenny. Um, I had, my regular prescription is in the top and in the bottom I have um, bifocals and I have lined bifocals and I like using those. You can also get like, if you really can't see very well at all, they have 4.0 readers off Amazon. Um, they're really cheap. You can try those. A lot of people like those as well. And so I don't have the best light 
right here where I'm stitching at. So you'll have to bear with me as I try to thread needles and do all the important things like that. So there's my needle threaded. Okay, now if I was stitching in Ada, so this would be Ada right here, I would come up in a hole and I'd flip over to the back. Um, you, everybody does it different as I said before, but you're gonna probably want to try not to have knots. Um, knots are more for embroidery and even then not the best in that case either because the knots will make a lump behind your stitching once it's time to frame it. So I go like this and I hold it down and then um, for me, I cross from the upper hole on the left to the bottom hole on the right. And then I'm gonna switch over to the back and I wanna make sure I catch that because I have to come up in this bottom left, but I wanna catch to make sure I have that thread in the back so that my first stitch that I make holds down the thread in the back. And then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna make another stitch. I'm just showing in general how to make a stitch. Um, then I'll come up here and I'll go down there. It's important that all, no matter which way you do it, if you do, they call it the first leg, which means the first cross of your cross stitch, they always need to go in the same direction. And for me, mine, I do mine this way. And the way I'm doing it right now, I can't even get this to go. This is, I'm not used to stiff fabric and I'm not used to stitching without a hoop. And so the way I'm doing right now, they call this the poke method, that I'm poking it up and I'm poking it down. Now, some people will tell you that you should stitch in this fashion so that you do all of your legs one direction and then come back and do your legs. You can see that I did one, two, three stitches in a row and I did all of the legs in that direction. And then I'm supposed to come back and, and do this and cross. I do not like doing this, especially if you have variegated thread, because if you do that, then the variegation and the change in the thread color doesn't keep consistent so that your stitches end up looking different colors like the variegation is meant to. So instead I do something called a sewing stitch. So I come up here like this and I make my first leg and do you see how I'm sewing it? and the top of my, I'm not flipping over to the back, I'm not poking, um, I'm doing more of a sewing motion if I can get past that one little thread there. Um, so I'm in, so I go down this hole, skip this one and go up into this hole. That's how the sewing method works. Then I come over and make my cross and go into this over here. So this is how the sewing method works. That way, all of the variegation of the thread stays in that single stitch. So this looks pretty easy. Well, I shouldn't say that. The first time I saw this, I was like confused as heck. And so I'm sure some of you are confused as well. Well, now the problem is, let's say our pattern tells us that we need to drop down. So what do we do? I am going to come up here 
And then for me, I just turn my fabric and then I go this direction and I go down to make that first leg. And then I start back in this in the stitching motion. So even if you do the sewing stitch, no matter what you do every once in a while, you're gonna have to do a couple poke stitches. Well, you can see how if I'm doing this method that it's much faster than if I'm stopping to poke. Anybody who's stitching on Ada, you will be using two strands of thread. I'm just using one strand of thread right now. And so I also like this method because I can see my progress right away. And I can think, oh, look at I just got that many stitches done. And so, so you can see that um, using a sewing method like this is probably a little faster. Every once in a while, my needle catches one of the little threads right there that make the X. So this is what stitching on Ada would look like. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how I stop. Okay, let's say that I'm done with this color. So I've got all of the stitching done at to on top. And so I flip over. And for me, I just go like this and run the thread Everybody does it a little different. Some people do a pin stitch. Some people are super neat with their stitches. I'm not on the back. I'm not super neat with my stitches on the back. And if you want to be super neat, you sure can. And if you want to do the pin stitch, you sure can. But this is just how I do it, and it works just fine. And so I'm going to clip that thread off. So that is how I do um, my stitching. For you, when you do this, if you're doing, if you're working on Ada, yours is gonna be, these stitches are gonna be much thicker and you won't see the white so much through the back because you'll have two strands of thread versus my one strand of thread. So this is how it's looking on the front and this is how it's looking on the back. Not beautiful on the back, but it's passable. And if you have a thread that you, a fabric that you can't see through, you don't have to worry about the back so much and how good it looks. Sometimes you'll have a see-through fabric on the front and then you'll end up with trouble because um, you can see your back thread through the fabric up through the, through the top. So now what stitching on, um, uh, linen is going to look like it's going to be kind of the same only different <laughs> um, this is going to be super hard for me because I can't see very well because I can't keep this super close to my face and so I'm going to try to do my best I need to count so with linen there's I'm in this hole I count down one two and then I go over one two and then I go down and I want to lock that. Oh, let me see, did I do that right? No, I did not do that right. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to pull it right out. Okay, I'm going to come up here. I can't do this very well because I can't see, because I can't get it close enough to my face. Okay, I'm going to try the stronger strength readers and maybe they'll be just enough to help me a little bit more. Um, let's see if we can make this work. Um, I don't know if that's better or not. Yeah, that's better. So I'm here, and we're gonna hold the thread on the back like just, oh, that's no good. Okay, so I'm coming up here and I'm gonna hold the thread on the back just like I did before. And then I'm gonna get moved over. One, two, one, two. And then that's the hole I go down. And then that's the hole I come up. And so with that, I made one stitch, but I forgot to see if I locked it. Oh, luckily I did lock the thread on the back. I just caught it without even trying. Yahoo, go me. Okay, so 
Um, I got to see where I'm going. I'm going to get in a mode here. Get this fabric turned around. Okay, I can see two stitches, two threads there. And I'm going to come down in this hole and I'm going to count two stitches, two threads over. And people get worried about trying to stitch on linen, but I want to tell you something. Once you already have that hole there, you can just come back and go on this hole because it's already marked by the previous stitch. And so when you stitch on linen, even more than Ada, your stitches build on each other. So the the hardest stitches that you put into your project are probably the first five minutes of your stitching because after that, most of the other stitches build on the previous stitches. So the reason I don't stitch, you know, I said earlier that some people stitch with a hoop and some people don't stitch with a hoop. The reason I don't stitch with a, I do stitch with a hoop is because I get terrible cramp in my thumb if I stitch and have to hold the fabric. So if I got to pinch so much to hold the fabric in place. So you can see how I just put a few stitches in there. And you can see how, again, I'm doing that same sewing stitch. Just like that. And I just believe that the sewing stitch is so much faster than a poke method. But some people... Um, like it. Some people don't like it. Some people love the poke method. You have to do whatever is right for you. You can see how one strand of floss covers this on 40 count really well. And now I want to take and I want to compare the two. Oh, now I have my readers on and I can't even see where the um, piece of Ada is. Here it is. You can see how I'm stitching on 40 count that my design is going to end up being much smaller than it is on this 14 count Ada. So that's the first things I wanted, to, I wanted to show you is just about stitching and how to do a sewing stitch. The next thing I want to talk to you about is how to position your piece on your piece of fabric. So I... Every time I show anything that I've stitched on the blog, I get a lot of people that um, make comments to me along the terms or along the lines of, why do you stitch up in the corner and that you, when you start a cross-stitch project, you have to start in the middle? That's not true. You don't have to start in the middle. A long time ago, all of these projects, um, I think all of us stitchers that used to be stitchers from the... 80s we used to buy a kit and in a kit came a pre-sized amount of fabric and so being that fabric was already pre-cut and they didn't do things like this like this designer does here it says blessings abound stitch count and then the stitch count is 154 by 67. Well by giving us what the stitch count is we can do the math and figure out what to do and where to start. In the olden days, or, you know, olden days all the way back to 80s, 90s, when we bought things in a prepackaged kit, the piece of linen already came in there, and the person who put the kit together did not tell us what the stitch count was. So in order to figure out where to start on the fabric, we needed to start in the middle. So a lot of us would fold our fabric in half, and then we'd hold our fabric in half again, and then we would know that right here, was the middle. And so oftentimes we'd even like take and we'd put like our needle in right here. And so we would know where the middle was and then we'd open it up and then we'd have our middle marked and we would know to start there. And then oftentimes in the chart that we had, the chart would have these arrows, just like charts do now. You can see there's an arrow here and you can see there's an arrow up here on our chart. So if you wanted to follow the two arrows down like this, then you would see the design and you would be able to start right there in the middle. If you wanna do that, you're welcome to do that. 
Um, I don't stitch that way. And so you'll have to decide how you wanna start. Um, we designed the stitch along so that we would be stitching the first two pumpkins on this for the month of March. So if you decide you wanna fold yours in half and you wanna stitch these two S's instead, that's perfectly up to you. This is a no rule stitch along. You do it however you like. But for me, I'm gonna start over here on the B. And to do that, I figured out um, doing the math, and I'll show you how to do the math at another time. But to do the math, I figured out that we basically need to, we have a two inch margin on each side. So if, if you know that, you can measure in, uh, this is a stitch gauge or a corner gauge is what they call these. So I can hold this here and I know that this is two inches. If I go right here and I start right here, this is two inches from the top and two inches from the side. And two inches is a good number. Some people like to stitch with three inches so then you'd put your piece in down here. But we don't have enough fabric for that. I think when I talk to Liz, everybody pretty much has a two inch margin on all sides. And so we'll, you can make, into, instead of putting your needle here in the center, you can put your needle here and know that you need to start approximately there. No matter what you do, you're not gonna have this completely centered and that's all the way okay because you'll be able to um, hide that in the back anyway. Nobody ever stitches it completely entirely perfect. So uh, real close, but not entirely perfect. So I'm going to start right up here when I, once I start stitching. And um, so if you're going to start stitching, what you'd do is you'd look at your chart. Um, I'm just going to show you the tiny little corner of it here. And so you would start with the moss color that I had. And so if you go up and you go over, if you start approximately right here for your counting and just count in like three stitches and then you can start um, right up there. And that's what I plan on doing. And once I get to the pumpkins, I'm gonna count down and I'm going to stitch the B first and then I'm going to go around the edge of the orange pumpkin and then um, count around. And then after it's already made the outline of that orange pumpkin, then I'll go in and do fill in stitch. And fill in stitch is something that I can do with Carver when he's here. So he really likes to help me help, help me stitch. So um, anyway, that's just a little start and um, please ask questions along the way and please go to Judy's blog at Patchwork Times because Judy will be having a lot of um, comments and good advice and tips for you as well. And so that's what, where I'm at as I'm starting the stitch along today. And I'm so happy that so many of you have joined us. Liz told me there's well over 200 people and probably getting closer to like 300 people that are stitching along. So Happy stitching, everyone.